All right, Terrence Bud Crawford says that the criticism that he gets for his resume is unfair. In his article, he talks about that it's unfair how people judge his resumes when people are not paying attention to the caliber of other people's opponents while they're paying so much attention to his. And he also goes to say that you have to understand I'm an excellent fighter. I make these fighters look like normal or average fighters, even when they're good fighters. But you have to understand, I want to fight the fights that the fans want to see, but it's not in my power. So in the meantime, I'm just fighting the, that, you know, basically I'm just fighting the people that they put in front of me. All right. So that's understandable. And I understand that. And it is true. So is it unfair? Yes and no. You know, it's unfair because the fact that he said they're not analyzing other people's resumes like they're analyzing his. And let's get something clear right now. This is a casual statement. This is a, often a casual flaw. People associate a big name with fighting a quality opponent. You can fight a quality opponent without having a big name, okay? A big name is what you call an Adrian Broner. But as far as skill-wise, you know, as far as opponent, as far as testing your metal, where is he on the level? Is he really up there? Is he top not, you know, is he top notch? No, he's not. But he has a big name, okay? So you could take, let's take Teofimo Lopez and Nakatani. Most people say, well, who did he fight? Nakatani, he ain't, he ain't nobody. Just because Nakatani doesn't have a name, it does not mean that Nakatani was not a good fighter. But if you don't assess the sweet science, if you don't look at boxing in that manner, if you don't go layers deep into boxing and go past just the casual level, you won't know that. So a lot of times they could fight a hell of a fight. But since his name is not popular, it does not equate to fighting a quality opponent. So when they say, get a name on your resume, what people are really saying is, get a name on your resume that holds weight. It does not matter if they're a good opponent or not. What matters is, do their name have any weight and do we know them? Okay? And that's what we neglected to break down this whole time we've been talking about boxing. Okay? Because that's a big key to the whole thing. You can fight a top quality opponent that doesn't have a popular name. Those are facts, but I'm going to explain it and I'm going to break it down in uh, videos that's going to come in the future. You know what I'm saying? We're really going to dive into the, you know what I'm saying, particular stuff when it comes to this boxing. So, in that manner, are they being unfair and stuff like that? And I said, yes, because if we were to be totally honest and this goes back to how the boxing game is set up. And this also goes back to the Paula Malinaji video. You know, you, you got to put it like this. Most of these people who are diehard or who say that Vasily Lomachenko is better than Terrence Crawford, this is that, they can't tell you who he beat to become champion. Straight up. They don't know who he is or who was that who was that person famous for beating? Because see, it's it's a battle of names up until we want to push narratives. Okay? The dude that Lomachenko beat, don't nobody know who that is. You know what I'm saying? Most people don't know how he got his first and second belt. People don't know who that is, and they don't know who they fought and, and who they beat. Okay? So truthfully of the matter is, if we wanted to be technical like that, Lomachenko ain't fought nobody. Period. But at the same time, once again, if anybody wants to defend that, say, no, he did fight good people. Once again, that falls into the realm of, yes, he probably did fight somebody good. But as far as popularity, as far as a name holding weight, he fought a nobody. He could have fought the baddest man on the planet. But as far as a draw wise popularity, he fought a nobody. This is the problem with uh, boxing. See, we haven't. We haven't really broke this down, you know what I'm saying, to really get into it like that. But that's the truth. A lot of people that we say are nobodies, we're calling them nobodies because their name is not popular. We're not judging it off the skill set. You know what I'm saying? But most people say, well, if you're a good boxer, then you'll have a good name. That's not true. Andy Ruiz is a good boxer. Did he have a name prior to Anthony Joshua? No. You know what I'm saying? 
So, when it comes to that, yes, they're being too harsh on him. You know what I'm saying? Because in that terms, both Crawford and Loma ain't fought nobody. But once again, they pushed the Loma. But I already told you what that is. But I don't want to get you lost on this subject. You know? So, when it comes to Terrence Crawford, he's right and he's wrong. Now, where is he wrong at? When you sign that contract with Bob Arum, it was his job to tell you what he could do for you in return for you signing for him. So you had to know what he could offer you and what he couldn't offer you. And you had to know the PBC fighters was close off to you prior to signing. Okay, you had to know that prior to signing. All right, but I don't blame you. That don't mean if you got to go over there and sign with PBC just because of this, because just because of that, because they're going to go over there and treat you how they want to treat you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not mad at where you decided to sign. You just have to know what they are able, what, what, what they have available for you. You got to know that, you know? So you sign with him knowing that, and you know that he couldn't get them fights made. And you know they don't like Bob Aram. And not only that, you know Bob Aram tries to F over everybody when it comes to contracts. You know that. Bob Aram is money hungry. Okay? That's the problem everybody eventually have with Bob Aram. You know? So you knew that. And you still signed with the guy. Alright? So, so so that's that. Uh, number two. Terrence Bud Crawford could be on his way to getting his fight. He doesn't want to have to do what it takes to get the fight made. So therefore, maybe you're not as big on that fight as you wanted. Because if you was really about that fight how you need it to be, you would be a carbon copy of what I seen in Teofimo Lopez. He didn't let up off of it. He knew that's what he wanted. And he put it out there to the world so, so nobody could hide from him. He called them bitches and everything else. He, he put him in a position where you couldn't ignore him. You know what I'm saying? Almost forced to fight kind of thing. You know, everybody's telling him he's not worth he, he didn't give up. He turned it into a smear campaign. He was dogging that man. You know? It's the same thing. I, I, I make constant references about the power of, of the voice. You could smoke Errol Spence out in under a few months. If you put up the right campaign... If you do the right thing on Instagram, if you do the right thing on Twitter, if you do the right thing on YouTube, you can set the boxing world on fire. You started to do it. Then as soon as you got on the phone with him, you let off the gas. Listen, that lets me know that you're okay with him leading. That means dictating when the fight happens. You're not going to take the initiative and push the envelope so the fight can happen when you need that fight to happen. This is the problem keep telling y'all y'all better learn from Tyson Fury Tyson Fury is sure he's the king currently he's the king in this shit if you want to do the social media thing I would say look into Ryan Garcia if you want to know how to work these crap be an MC have mic control get the crap watch Tyson Fury he understands that's why I like Tyson because he understands the elements of boxing so well I'm talking about outside the ring this is what not just the PBC, none of y'all understand. None of y'all understand it no more. You can't be Anthony Johnson, just show up and smile and have everybody love you. You can't do that. If, if, if you people like Tyson Fury, you're going to have to work a little bit. And he understands the elements so well. Floyd understood the elements well. Muhammad Ali understood the elements well. Roy Jones Jr., he understood the elements well. He didn't have enough money, but low-key Roy Jones was Money Mayweather before Money Mayweather was Money Mayweather. What Roy, what, what Floyd Mayweather did, believe it or not, in a way, Roy Jones Jr. laid the blueprint to what Floyd Mayweather did. Floyd Mayweather just took it to a higher level. You know what I'm saying? But... Roy Jones was already on his own promotional shit. You know what I'm saying? He, he was already promoting his own shit. He was already being his own boss. He was already trying to get his own fight. He was already doing music videos. He was already trying to sign art. He was already all of that. You know what I'm saying? Before. You know, and it's one of those reasons, you know what I'm saying? If they see Roy Jones right now, 
uh, who they gonna bring up? Can't be stopped, can't be rocked, can't be touched, can't be stopped. You know, regardless of if you think it's whack or not, it imprinted on your memory. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it imprint all that helped. Y'all must have forgot that flamboyant, you, you know what I'm saying? Because Roy Jones was a cocky dude, you know what I'm saying? And women loved Roy Jones at the time. I remember how they all love Roy. Like, all that played a part. This is the stuff you got to use to get these damn fights. Jack Johnson chased around uh, Jeffries for how many years? Two years? Two years on the road chasing a champ trying to get a fight? You chase a man for two years? Traveling chasing this dude trying to get a fight. That's what I'm saying. The boxers of the yesteryears, man, they don't even compare. Anyways, that's my thoughts. I'll leave your thoughts in the comment section. Bruce Van, I'm out.